Shalom Alakim. Peace be upon you and welcome back to the broadcast. Today we are looking at this week's Torah portion. Before I get into the summary, I want to remind you of how last week ended. So let's go to chapter 24. I want to read verse 7. Because what we have going on with Israel right now is this beautiful picture of them entering into a covenant with God. And there's excitement and everybody's thrilled And we need to take the time to appreciate it before it all comes unraveled in coming Torah portions. So last week, if we go to chapter 24, verse 7, And he took the book of the covenant and read it in the hearing of the people. And they said, All that Jehovah has spoken, we shall do and obey. So they've been handed these commandments and ordinances and they're excited and they're like, no problem, right? Whatever God says, we will do and obey. And this week's Torah portion is similar because they're going to respond with such great attitude as we'll see. Let me give you the portion summary. Just a reminder, the portions, the name of each week's portion, and all this is on the website, at scriptureandprophecy.com, but the name corresponds to a word that's used in the first sentence or the first verse. Here's the portion summary. The 19th reading from the Torah is named Terumah. In Exodus 25, verse 2, the Lord commanded Moses, tell the sons of Israel to take a contribution for me. The word translated as contribution is Terumah. Which is, in, which is the name of the Torah portion. Teruma is a word with no real English equivalent. In the Torah, Teruma refers to a certain type of offering dedicated to the temple, like a tithe or a first fruit offering. In Exodus 25, the contribution is for the building of the holy place. The Torah reading is occupied with the instructions for the building of the tabernacle and its furnishings. So let's start with the first two verses here. Then I'm going to give a short little commentary, and then we're just going to read the rest of the portion. Probably not much commentary at all for me moving forward. Chapter 25, verses 1 and 2. And Jehovah spoke to Moshe, saying, Speak to the children of Israel, that they take up a contribution for me, from everyone whose heart moves him. You shall take up my contribution. So please note, this has always been God's attitude, as we can see even from the beginning, that we would give of our own free will, love, and passion for the things of God, for the kingdom of God. I'm reminded of 2 Corinthians chapter 9. Let's read two verses here, and then we'll get on with the portion. Chapter 9, verse 6. But this I say, he which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly, and he which soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. Every man according as he purposes in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loveth a cheerful giver. God doesn't want the person who's like, oh, it's that time in the month again. I got to write a check. No, he wants the person who's excited to hand over a portion of what God has given them back into the kingdom. What we're going to find today in today's portion is that they respond overwhelmingly to the point where they have to be restrained from giving because they've given so much that they're starting to be in abundance over what they need. It's a beautiful picture. Open up your hearts this morning. See if there be anything in here that speaks to you. For the most part, I'm just going to read the portion. Let's begin, starting with chapter 25, verse 1. And Jehovah spoke to Moshe, saying, Speak to the children of Israel, that they take up for me a contribution for me, 
from everyone whose heart moves him, you shall take up my contribution. And this is the contribution which you take up from them, gold and silver and bronze, and blue and purple and scarlet and fine linen, and goat's hair and ram skin dyed red, and fine leather and acacia wood, oil for the light, spices for the anointing oil, and for sweet incense, show him stones and stones to put in the shoulder garment and in the breastplate, and it shall make me a mikdash, and I shall dwell in their midst. According to all that I show you, the pattern of the Mishkan and the pattern of all its furnishings, make it exactly so. Please note, when it's talking about the Mishkan and the Mikdash here in this in the Hebrew, it's referring to the tabernacle. And they shall make an ark of acacia wood, two and a half amma long, an amma and a half wide, and an amma and a half high. And you shall overlay it with the clean gold inside the outside, and you shall overlay it. And you shall make it make on it a molding of gold all around. And you shall cast four rings of gold for it, and put them in its four corners, two rings on one side and two rings on the other side. And you shall make poles of acacia wood, and overlay them with gold. And you shall put the poles into the rings on the sides of the ark, to lift up the ark by them. The poles are in the rings of the ark, they are not taken from it. And into the ark you shall put the witness which I give you. And you shall make a lid of atonement of clean gold, two and a half amma long and an amma and a half wide. You shall make two cherubim of gold. Make them of beaten wood at the two ends of the lid of atonement. And make one cherub at one end and the other cherub at the other end. Make the cherubim from the lid of atonement at its two ends. So please note, cherub, cherub. What's being described here is the, the construction of the Ark of the Covenant. The cherubim, those are the cherubs that you read in English, they're angels. And the cherubim shall be spreading out their wings above, covering the lid of atonement with their wings. With their faces toward each other, the faces of the cherubim toward the lid of atonement. And you shall put the lid of the atonement on top of the ark. And put into the ark the witness which I give you. And I shall meet with you there. And from above the lid of atonement and between the two cherubim, which are on the ark of the witness, I shall speak to you all that which I command you concerning the children of Yisrael. And you shall make a table of acacia wood and two amma long and an amma wide and an amma and a half high. And you shall overlay it with clean gold and shall make a molding of gold all around. And shall make for it a rim of tofa all around. And shall make a gold molding for the rim around. And you shall make for it four rings of gold and put the rings at the four corners that are at its four legs. The rings are close to the rim as holders for the poles to lift the poles. And you shall make the poles of acacia wood and overlay them with gold. And the table shall be lifted with them. And you shall make its dishes and its ladles and its jars and its bowls for pouring. Make them of clean gold. And you shall put the showbread on the table before me continually. And you shall make a lampstand of clean gold. The lampstand is made of beaten work. Its base, its shafts, its cups... Its ornamental knobs and blossoms are from it. And six branches shall come out of its sides. Three branches of the lampstand out of one side. And three branches of the lampstands out of the other side. Three cups made like almond flowers on one branch. And ornamental knobs and blossoms. And three cups made like almond flowers of the other branch. And ornamental knob and blossoms. So for the six branches coming out of the lampstand. And on the lampstand itself are four cups made like almond flowers with ornamental knobs and blossoms. And a knob under the first two branches of the same. And a knob under the second two branches of the same. And a knob under the third two branches of the same according to the six branches coming out of the lampstand. Their knobs, their branches are of the same. 
all of it one beaten work of clean gold, and you shall make seven lamps for it. And they shall mount its lamps, so that they give light in front of it. And its snuffers and their trays are of clean gold. It is made of kikar of clean gold, with all these utensils. So see, and do according to the pattern which was shown to you on the mountain. So please note, we have, you know, the picture of the menorah, these lampstands. This is all stuff that's to represent what I believe is already in heaven. When John gets the revelation, he sees these lampstands and and many of the things being described here. So I believe that's what's happening. And there's probably much more to the story. There's so much we don't know, so much we don't understand. And uh, it, it may seem boring at times or like, why do we need to know this? Like this whole portion is just about making these things for the tabernacle. But you're going to recognize some of this stuff in the kingdom. And so it would serve you well to get at least an idea of what this stuff is, what it might represent, how it was to be made. Everything is very, very specific. Let's continue on. Chapter 26. And make the Mishkan with tin curtains of fine woven linen and blue and purple and scarlet. Make them with the karabim, the work of a skilled workman. The length of each curtain is twenty-eight ama, and the width of each curtain four ama, and the curtains having one measure. Five curtains are joined to each other, and five curtains are joined to each other. And you shall make loops of blue on the edge of the end of one curtain, and do the same on the edge and the end of the second curtain. Make fifty loops in the one curtain, and make fifty loops on the edge of the seam of the second curtain the loops being opposite to each other. And you shall make fifty hooks of gold and shall join the curtains together with the hooks and the mishkin shall be one. And you shall make curtains of goat's hair for a tent cover, the mishkin. Make eleven curtains. The length of each curtain is thirty ama and the width of each curtain four ama, one measure to the eleven curtains. And you shall join the five curtains by themselves and the six curtains by themselves. And you shall double over the six curtains at the front of the tent. And you shall make fifty loops on the edge of the curtain that is outermost. And fifty loops on the edge of the curtain on the second curtain. And you shall make fifty bronze hooks and put the hooks into the loops and join the tent together. And it shall be one. And the overlapping part of the rest of the curtains of the tent, the half curtain that remains shall hang over the back of the mishkan. And an ama on one side and an ama on the other side of what remains of the length of the curtains of the tent is to hang over the sides of the mishkan, on this side and on that side to cover it. And you shall make a covering of ram skin dyed red for the tent and a covering of fine leather above that. And for the mishkan you shall make the boards of acacia wood standing up. Ten ama is the length of a board, and an ama and a half the width of each board. Two tenons in each board for binding one to another. Do the same for all the boards of the Mishkan. And you shall make the boards of the Mishkan twenty boards for the south side, and make forty sockets of silver under twenty boards, two sockets under each of the boards for its two tenons. And for the second side of the Mishkan, on the north side, twenty boards. And the forty sockets of silver, two sockets under each of the boards. And for the near parts of the Mishkan westward, make six boards. And make two boards for the corners of the Mishkan in the rear. And they are doubled beneath, similar, they are complete to the top, to the one ring. So it is for both of them, they are for two corners." And they shall be eight boards, and their sockets of silver, sixteen sockets, two sockets under one board, and two sockets under the other board. 
and you shall make bars of acacia wood, five for the boards on one side of the Michigan, and five bars for the boards on the other side of the Michigan, and five bars for the boards of the side of the Michigan for the rear parts westward, with the middle bar in the midst of the boards going through from end to end, and overlay the boards with gold and make their rings of gold as holders for the bars and overlay the bars with gold. And you shall raise up the Mishkin according to its pattern which you were shown on the mountain. And you shall make a veil of blue and purple and scarlet and fine woven linen, the work of a skilled workman made with carabim. And you shall put it on the four columns of acacia wood overlaid with gold, their hooks of gold upon the four sockets of silver. And you shall hang the veil from the hooks, and shall bring the ark of the witness there and behind the veil. And the veil shall make a separation for you between the Kodesh and the Most Kodesh place. That is to say, the Holy and the Holy of Holies, right? Verse 34, And you shall put the lid of atonement upon the ark of the witness in the Most Kodesh place. And you shall put the table outside the veil and the lampstand opposite of the table on the side of the Mishkin toward the south and put the table on the north side. And you shall make a covering for the door of the tent of blue and purple and scarlet and fine woven linen made by a weaver. And you shall make for the covering five columns of acacia wood and overlay them with gold, their hooks of gold. And you shall cast five sockets of bronze for them. Please note, before we move on to chapter 27 and get these last 19 verses in, I kind of misspoke there. I said Holy of Holies. What it actually says is uh, a holy place separated from, separating the holy place from the most holy place. Um, I wanted to correct myself on that. Let's continue on. We only have, what did I say, 19 verses left? Uh, Yes, let's begin. And you should make an altar of acacia wood, five amma long and five amma wide. The altar is squared in its height three amma. And you shall make its horns on its four corners. Its horns are of the same. And you shall overlay it with bronze. And you shall make its pots to receive its ashes and its shovels and its basins and its forks and its five holders. Make all its utensils of bronze. And you shall make a grating for it. A bronze network, and it shall make on the network four bronze rings at its four corners, and shall put it under the rim of the altar beneath, so that the network is halfway up the altar. And you shall make poles for the altar poles of acacia wood, and shall overlay them with bronze. And the poles shall be put in the rings, and the poles shall be on on the two sides of the altar for lifting it. Make it hollow with boards as it is shown to you on the mountain, so that they are to make it. And you shall make the courtyard for the Mishkin, for the south side screens, for the courtyard made of fine woven linen, and a hundred amma long for one side. And it's twenty columns, and there are twenty sockets of bronze, the hooks of the columns, and their bands of silver. And so for the north side and the links, screens one hundred long, with its twenty columns, and there are twenty sockets of bronze, and the hooks of the columns, and their bands of silver. And the width of the courtyard, on the west side screens of fifty amma, with their ten columns and their ten sockets. And the width of the courtyard on the east side, fifty amma. And the screens on one side of the gate, fifteen amma, with three columns and their three sockets. And on the other side, screens of fifteen, with their three columns and their three sockets. And for the gate of the courtyard, a covering twenty amma long of blue and purple and scarlet and fine woven linen made by the weaver, four columns and four sockets. All of the columns around the courtyard have bands of silver, their hooks silver, and their sockets bronze. The length of the courtyard is one hundred amma, and the width fifty by fifty, and the height five amma, woven of fine linen thread, and its sockets of bronze. All the utensils of the Mishkin, for all its services, All its pegs and all the pegs of the courtyard are bronze. And that, my friends, is where this week's Torah portion ends. Not overly exciting, right? It's just the uh, commands on how to make all of this stuff. 
I think the thing that jumps out to me the most about this portion is what we read at the very beginning. Speak to the people of Israel that they take from me a contribution from every man whose heart moves him. You shall receive a contribution for me. The attitude of a cheerful giver. I pray that you've been blessed this morning. Uh, thanks for tuning in. Thanks for listening. Thanks for praying. All of these things. I just hope and pray that the podcast is, is a blessing to you, even on weeks like this, where the <laughs> the last the end of the week the the podcast comes out late, not the most exciting portion, but it's God's word, and the portions were just read in the synagogues aloud not necessarily filled with commentary and thoughts. And so I hope I made space and room for you to hear God's word and to think for yourselves. Peace and grace be with all of you. And until next time, God bless.